And we are pleased to be joined here on Sports Spectrum by Aaron Kraft. He's currently playing professional basketball in Italy. He joins us from Italy here on the show today. Aaron, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's good to talk to you, man. We're really excited to, to kind of get to know your journey a little bit, but it's really about the journey right now. When yeah. you look at the situation, and you posted a, a video recently on Twitter, just kind of updating everything. I think it was about a week ago uh, mm -hmm. as we're taping this Monday, March 23rd, and kind of updating how things were going. And when I saw that, um, you know, we then did a story on you on sportsspectrum.com, but I thought, let's talk to Aaron. Let's let's find out a little bit about what he's going through, what it's like in Italy right now. Uh, we're hearing horror stories about Italy here yeah. in the United States, and obviously so much is going on here as well with the coronavirus. First of all, how are you? How's your wife, Amber, your your child? How are you guys doing, I guess, to start? Yeah, yeah, we're we're doing we're doing well. You know, as the video said a week ago, nothing much has changed for us. Um, this is day, I think this is day 12 for us of lockdown quarantine, kind of that scenario. So, uh, but I, I do have a, I have a 14 month old son, so he has no idea what's going on. So, uh, yeah. our responsibility as parents is just kind of heightened in this time of trying to occupy him and do what we can to help him grow. Uh, and then obviously make sure that we're being safe ourselves and, and not putting ourselves in harm's way. Where are you, I guess, for those listening and watching in terms of where, where you are in Italy? Where are you exactly? Yeah, yeah. So I'm in Trento, Italy, which um, I'm an hour north of Verona. So it's in northern Italy. I'm actually like an hour and a half from the Austrian border. So I'm pretty far up here. I'm about I'm two hours from Milan, two hours from Venice. So I'm in, uh, in, in the mountains up here in, in northern Italy. A lot of people remember you from your time at Ohio State. Tell everybody what you're obviously you're playing pro basketball there, but kind of what it's what this league is that you play in, uh, how it's been going, when did it start, kind of taking us up to when you shut down. I'm assuming you're not playing right now, obviously. So when you shut down playing. Yeah, you know, so we got here in August. And that's that's normal for overseas guys to come over and start a training camp. Game started in uh, the beginning of October. And we were actually fortunate to play in, in two leagues with this team. So one is just in the Italian league. We play only Italian teams. Those games are always on the weekend. And then the other league was a uh, Euro Cup. So we actually played teams from other countries, uh, Turkey, Spain, a German team, a uh, Polish team also. So that, that game was during the week. Uh, so that, that lasted all the way up through until um, February, mid-February. We, we have a, a break regardless of what's going on. Uh, you get a, a two-week break in the middle of the season for a special tournament that goes on in every country. Right. And that was my last Italian league game was February 9th. And we had a two-week break, uh, a three-week break. We came back. We had one international game in Euro Cup. We went to Serbia. And then when we got back, that's when it started, uh, the, the snowball started rolling. One game was canceled. Then a second game was canceled. And then it was, okay no games until April, but you can still practice. And then, like I said, 12 days ago, they just officially shut everything down and said, no one can uh, get together, practice, uh, kind of you're in a home lockdown for at least 14 days and we'll reevaluate at the beginning of April. 12 days ago, and that's kind of what it happened with uh, us here in America too, 12 days ago is when the NBA shut down and, and suspended uh, play. And you had the whole story with, um, the Utah Jazz and Rudy Gobert and he contracted the virus and then everything seems to snowball after that. It's weird to think 12 days ago uh, is less than two weeks as we're talking. It feels like five months, doesn't it? With, without question. I mean, that, I remember that time because was, it was probably like two or three days before that we finally got official word that we were done. So it was kind of like, okay, let's see if this progresses worse. And it was like a 24-hour span where everything just grinded to a halt and then obviously every day since then you you check you check the news you check twitter you check whatever you do and something's different every day so it just feels forever ago but we're like like you said it's 12 days 12 days aaron Kraft is our guest here on sports spectrum so take us back to 12 days ago for you and kind of what it's been like since these 12 days from your perspective, from what you've seen in Trento and that area. Um, we're hearing a lot of 
a lot of stories and, and reading, unfortunately, a lot of really terrible things that are happening in Italy as far as people contracting the virus, as far as deaths. Obviously, it's, it's terrible all around the world. Yeah. But take us back to about 12 days ago and kind of what's transpired in your life for you guys since. Yeah, you know, so just to give a little context, you know, the, the main epicenter of the outbreak is like two and a half hours from Trento. Right. It's south, um, southwest. So we're relatively close to where everything's going pretty crazy. So for, for my family and then for also the other Americans on our team, it's been a slow progression of when, you know, should we stay? What's, what's this going to look like? Should we go home? And, and that's been on top of, fortunately, I, I think the, the Italian people have taken this lockdown very seriously. Uh, we've even gotten dirty looks. Uh, we're allowed to walk around. We're allowed to go yeah. outside, like as long as we're close to our house. People still look at us a little, little strange, kind of yell at us to go home. So that that just shows how serious they've been taking this this lockdown, which, in the grand scheme of things, is a is a great a great thing that's going on. But they they've the the government has slowly continued to take things away, mm-hmm. just. Three days ago, they shut down all the running paths um, that are that are around our city. They shut down the public parks, and now my wife actually just this morning was stopped by the police while she was running outside, and he said, "You know, you can stay around your house, but stay 200 meters from from where you live." Hmm. So it's just a progressive. You know, you, you try to find a normal. Like, okay, we're going to be here for a while. Let's figure out what we can do to entertain our son, to have fun ourselves. And then something changes. So you have to find another normal, another thing to try to keep the days moving forward. Is it crazy in terms of grocery stores and things like that, like it is here in the States? I mean, you've probably been reading if you're on social media, there is no toilet paper apparently (laughs) in the United States that's available to anybody. I laugh. Hopefully that's not necessarily the case, but it seems like people are going uh, into super protective role and trying to stock up. Is that the same in Italy? There was, there was, when, like, I would say maybe two and a half weeks ago when it really was ground level, there was a, a mini panic. Uh, when we went to the store, things like chicken, eggs, bananas, they, they were all out. Hmm. But now the grocery stores, we went today, it's, it's normal. Um, the only thing they're doing is they're controlling the number of people that can be in there at once. So you have to wait outside. But once you get in, shopping's pretty normal. And it's actually kind of nice because there's very few people around. They have everything you need. So that's actually one benefit or perk of us still being here is we don't have to, we don't have to fight the toilet paper rush. Do you know anyone or have you heard any stories of people in your circle that either have the virus or have, you know, know somebody that does? It feels like everybody may know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Yeah, I think when there were, there were two instances recently that kind of like, wow, this, this thing's blowing up. Uh, the first was, you know, I played in Monaco and I actually got to meet the got to meet Prince Albert hmm. uh, at the end of the season. We had a good season, so he wanted to congratulate us. And I shook his hand, had a nice conversation with him. So when he when he contracted it, that was kind of like, wow, this this is real. And the other one, um, a smaller known person here, a photographer for the team, yeah. her neighbor knows someone that passed away. So just hearing that that, you know, those degrees of separation, it just slowly gets closer to you. That's that's when it starts getting it gets starts getting a little more real. How how seriously did you contemplate coming back? I'm assuming your family's all back here. Yeah, no, we've <laughs> we went back and forth every every day for a while, and even today we'll we'll sit and think should have should we have gone home? Uh, especially after you know it was, it was two or three days ago when the government put out that travel advisory for literally telling all Americans to come home immediately yeah. or stay out indefinitely that was the biggest right after that two of our american teammates went home one stayed with us it was just it was a tough decision um, but honestly we for us we were trying to make a wise decision we we were trying to make a decision based off of facts and knowledge and not just our emotions running wild and crazy possibilities that could happen for us you know we already talked about the grocery store um, it's normal here too we think we're ahead of the curve in the United States, unfortunately. So it kind of felt like going home, we would be pushing ourselves back. We would be quarantined in our house anyway. So we wouldn't be seeing people or, or doing anything like that. And three, I'm still under contract with this team. So right. they're still holding out 
to try to see if we can finish this thing in a month, two months. So if, if I do go home and then wouldn't make it back, I'm, I'm out contractually. So there were a few things, but there's nothing like the comfort of home for sure. Aaron Kraft is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. This was supposed to be your last year of basketball. Did I read that right? Is that true? Yeah, that was, that's the plan. That's the plan. Still is the plan, but yeah. Why is that? I, uh, I felt like this is the right time for me to step away, to go, and, uh, to go back to medical school and kind of chase that dream. I'm, I'm 29. I have a chance before I turn 30 to chase, to chase two dreams that I've had since I was a little kid. And God's given me the opportunity to do, to do that. So it just felt like the right time. Uh, share the dream a little bit more. Dr. Aaron Kraft, I presume. That dream. Yeah, I hope so. You know, I, it's, to be honest, when I got to college, that's, I thought I was going to become a, a doctor right when I was done playing. I, I didn't believe, I said I wanted to play professionally, but I didn't really believe that I could. Hmm. Um, it wasn't until about my junior year that that became a reality. So those first two and a half years, I, I took my school, uh, made sure I took the right prerequisites prereqs for, for medical school and, and had all my ducks in a row. Then God decided to open a door and said, Hey, you know, you're 23. Let's, let's chase it. Let's go after it. Uh, and I've had, a, I've had a ton of fun. Has my basketball career gone exactly how I imagined when I left school? Probably not, but uh, I've, I've always been where, like I've, where we've needed to be. I've been around great people. I've met unbelievable teammates and coaches and GMs. So that was great. But as I said, you know, I, I now have a 14 month old son. Um, I'm getting a little older. So medical school, as, as you get older, seems like it would get more difficult. Um, it just seemed like a right time to, to kind of create a more stabilizing environment for my son, for my wife, and get us started down that path. Um, explain, you know, and people from an outside view might say, okay, Aaron Kraft, he didn't go make it to the NBA and, and win six time, six defensive player of the year awards, you know, and dominate or whatever, but it's been a pretty good career. Can you kind of take us through this, maybe, maybe the cliff notes version of your journey coming out from Ohio state to where you are now? Cause I know you've been a lot of different places. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, it started with a punch in the gut for sure. Um, everyone thinks that you're going to get drafted and my name was not called. So that's kind of the first time in your career that you really have to start believing in yourself. And there's a ton of people telling you what you are not good at. And you, you tend to start believing them, but I had a great year first year in the D league with a great team, a great coach in Santa Cruz and, and Casey Hill that really kind of reinvigorated my love for the game. Had a stint hungry that didn't work out, but it went back to the D league. Uh, and then what my career really took off is coming here to, to, to Trento my first year in 2016, 2017. The GM stuck with me as a rookie overseas. You don't, you don't quite get it for a couple of months. We were doing bad, but he stuck with me. And that's when I realized, you know, playing overseas is a great option. Uh, my wife and I got to travel. We got to see so many amazing things that we could only dream of. And, and then I, and then, you know, out of nowhere, I, I get an offer from Monaco where I'm not sure if you know about Monaco, but, and I didn't really, my agent texted me and said, Hey, Google this place. And then tell me what, tell me what to do. So I Googled it and I said, Oh man, I, these pictures are amazing. The weather's nice all year. Let's go. I'm in. Um, that was a fantastic year. And then, yeah, then I've been back here for these last two, just really enjoying it. Um, it's been great to be in one place and to be able to, to build relationships with Italians and really dive into this culture and, and see the similarities, but similarities, but also the differences back home. And um, this year, you know, everyone wants your, your final year to kind of, you know, you want to walk off and be great. Sure. And it's been anything but that, you know, we've had ups and downs and really big struggles, but once again, it's been exactly where I've needed to be. It's, it's grown me as a leader, as a teammate. And, and now this, this situation, I, I'm not completely sure what we're supposed to be learning yet, but I'm sure that'll, that'll come out eventually. Tell me about your faith. We haven't really pivoted into the faith world yet. Obviously, you're on this show because you're a man of God. Tell me about maybe the faith that sustains you, particularly right now, certainly. I have to imagine that that faith is, is central to who you are, but really throughout this journey, too. Yeah, definitely. You know, as, as I've alluded to, I, I truly believe God's taken me where I've needed to be. 
definitely not where I wanted to be. I would be in the NBA right now as a role player, just sure. making money and, and being on a great team winning. But God had other plans, and I'm, I'm glad he had other plans for me. It's, it's helped me. It's humbled me, and it's grown me to prepare me to be not only a better husband, but a better father, you know, hopefully a better doctor in the end. So, and, and especially right now in this season, um, going into what you believe is your final, your final, you know, your final hurrah, there are, there've been two uh, extremes that I've really, that I've struggled with. And one is thinking that my entire basketball career and my, you know, who I am is all predicated on how we do this season. If we win a championship, I'll be a winner for the rest of my life. And if we lose, I'll be thought of as a loser for the rest of my life. And then the other side of it was, it's a lot easier just not to care. Let me be here. Let me collect my paycheck that can help pay for medical school and then let me go home. And God just time after time has slowly reminded me, like both of those are so wrong. He wants me to care deeply about where I am and to give my maximum effort for my teammates, my family, the ones that I'm away from back in the States. And he also wants to tell me, you know, no matter what happens this season, I'm still loved. You know, I'm, I'm loved by him. And I don't have to worry about winning my last game to, to, be, a, to be a value to society or to this world. And, and, and that's the biggest thing that's, that's comforting me now is, is his love that is sustaining and just – always there because I don't have a basketball practice to go to to win games and feel good about myself right now I I have right. God's word in front of me I have my son I have my wife so those are the things he's given me to to really show me you know what what really is important when did you make uh Christ Lord like when does that testimony begin and was it something when you were a little kid and kind of grew or was it something that happened you know as you got a little bit older yeah, no, I, I actually, I, my family, uh, we never went to church. And I thought about this recently, you know, until I was about a junior in high school, if you had asked me who Jesus was, I probably wouldn't have been able to give you an answer. Mm. Um, you know, I lived life and I was that, I was the good kid, um, was good at sports, had a lot of friends and, and thought that was, that was the ticket, you know, that was the way to, to be happy. And by the time I was a senior, I kind of realized that wasn't the case. And I was worried because I knew I was going to, keep chasing that dream into college by playing basketball. So I had some answers that um, I needed to find, had some great um, loving friends and older people that poured into my life and really kind of showed me, you know, what I was missing, that I was using basketball for something it wasn't intended to be used for. And then my, I would say my faith really took off by the time I got to college. Um, John Diebler was a senior when I was a freshman and I actually knew him when I was 12. So I had this relationship and I told myself, whatever he does, I'm going to do. Um, hmm. So if he went out on Thursdays, I would have went out. I, I just would have. And it's crazy. I got there on a Sunday. The first thing he invited me to was a Bible study on Monday night. Hey, it's right outside your dorm. Let's go. And I said, all right, I'm, I'm in. Right. And from that point, he just, he took me under his wing. He showed me what it was like to live in a spotlight, but not be consumed by that spotlight. And he introduced me to, to guys that were big, tough, strong guys that had hats and just didn't look like Christians, but we're some of the strongest believers that I know. And, and that's when I started realizing, man, this, this, this Christian thing is, is not for, you know, people that are weak and soft. Like these people are, are manly men and, and they love the Lord and they love their sport. And that's when I was, that's when I was all in seeing guys live it out in college uh, is when it was really when it took off for me. Living it out is so important, right? Especially as you've gotten older and you've probably, uh, seen a lot of different cultures, been around in a lot of different cool places, as you mentioned, that living it out is important. Obviously, you want to tell people and you want to share the gospel with as many people as possible. But living it out is where I think the realness of your faith kind of blooms from. Is, is that fair for you? Yeah, no, absolutely. And like you said, I can't I cannot speak with a lot of the people I come in contact with on a daily basis. Uh, I true. fake speak Italian. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I didn't pick up any French. Montenegrin was crazy difficult but the one thing everyone understands is how you treat people you know how you live kind of what what you what you stand for and that's something that I've really had to to lean on because my witness at times can be verbally but a lot of times it it's just not an option for me so my teammates my foreign teammates uh, they need to see me making the decisions that are in line with my faith and that and that's the way that 
kind of points them in the direction of God because it'd be very difficult for me to sit down with someone that English is their second or even third language and try to piece that piece the gospel message together. So I've just really tried to to live that out on on a daily basis at practice on on travel trips in games. You know how I treat refs, how I treat teammates, how you yeah. treat mistakes, those type of things. I'm going to give you a minute to kind of brag about your wife because I know just in talking to a lot of athletes uh, on this show, uh, they wouldn't be where they are and be able to pursue what they pursue, coaches, players, broadcasters, whoever we talk to, if it wasn't for their wives. And so brag about Amber a little bit. Oh, man. Amber and I got married in August after we graduated. Two weeks later, we, we moved to California for the D-League season. So... <laughs> Literally, ever since we got married, we've been on the move, and she's been amazing. Like you said, I, I could not do this without her. From the, the small daily things of, you know, cooking meals, preparing meals, and right now taking care of Owen, to tons of other things, packing, like an adventure partner to have, someone that, that tells me what I need to hear, uh, especially and not what I want to hear, uh, someone to hold me accountable and really just be there for me. Um, she's, she's been there every step of the way. Uh, and and this is this is impossible without her and something I should tell her more often but it is <laughs> is truly impossible w without her well I'll send you the link to this when we're done and you can make sure she watches it or listens <laughs> for to sure. it that? <laughs> for sure. uh, last question Aaron this has been great thanks so much for your time yeah. encourage those watching and those listening um, maybe one piece of encouragement that you want the audience to hear right now particularly coming from Italy, where you are right now, going through everything that we're all kind of going through, uncertainty, fear for some, share some encouragement for us. Yeah, you know, I, I think first and foremost, like, I, we, we've struggled with anxiety too over here and panic and the fear, it's everywhere, you know, that, and for us, the, the death toll just continues to rise. And two days ago, 753 people passed away in Italy. Mm. So it's, the darkness is real right now, but, but for me, you know, I've Psalm 62 has really been speaking to me recently about God being, God is your refuge. He's your salvation. He's your glory. He's your hope. And that is true today and every day. Uh, I, I, I cannot speak truth into why this is going on and, and have all the answers, but I do know that God is bigger. God has a purpose sometimes somewhere in this. And, and for me personally, I've, I've already begun to, to feel what he's teaching me through this. So the encouragement I think for everyone is, is God is bigger than, than anything we can, we can handle or, or go through. So the more we can cl be close to him, the, the better I think we'll be. It's really good stuff there. He is Aaron Kraft coming to us from Italy right now. Uh, we'll see if you got another game in you. Yeah, I hope that you get to play and finish this thing out properly. But if not, congrats on a great career. And hopefully the next time we get you on, maybe we'll be calling you Dr. Aaron Kraft. Who knows? I, would, I, I, I surely hope so. I surely <laughs> hope so. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, man. Stay safe. Yeah, for sure. Thank you.